Hi and welcome to Hacking Instant. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a show and tell on what I did to give these pack cameras manual shutter speeds. Now, when these cameras came back out in the 1960s, this little electric eye was a huge leap forward in Edwin Land's goal of pure one-step photography. Now, these pack cameras obviously uh, were not uh, didn't accomplish that goal. There was many steps to take in the picture. Uh, with this camera, but this electric eye went a long ways toward that goal. Now before this electric eye uh, appeared in some of his cameras, they appeared in a couple of the roll fill cameras before this, but this pack film, these pack film cameras all had, well almost all of them had this characteristic of having an electric eye so that you didn't have to take out your meter and meter your scene and then set something on the lens and then take the picture. This just basically took care of all that for you. Well, automatic exposure is great with a, with a few circumstances. Now, if you have a um, camera that has automatic exposure, you need to be able to set the film speed and you need to be able to buy film that matches the film speed. Well, of course, Polaroid doesn't make film anymore. So when we think about converting these cameras to other film formats, then this automatic exposure isn't really super useful anymore. Just because the um, film speeds that you can set on this camera are 75, 150, 300, and 3000 ASA, or you can call it ISO if you want, but they say ASA on this camera. Now, there's not a whole there's not a whole lot of different types of film that fit into those ASA settings and you can kind of work around it by setting it let's say you had 100 ISO film um, and you could set it for 75 and maybe one mark um, toward darken or something like that and then maybe you'll get some good exposures and and you know actually this this system worked really well and I still use it um, in certain circumstances but for the most part uh, when we're looking at doing different formats you need something you need to be have control over the shutter speed and the aperture with this camera and so uh, back maybe a, a two years ago I'm thinking um, I came up with a method of doing manual uh, shutter speeds just with a little resistor array and uh, all it really is um, inside this camera is a photocell and this photocell is basically just a variable resistor. Now uh, when it's higher resistance the shutter speeds longer when it's lower resistance the shutter speeds uh, faster and very simple operation and a lot of a lot of people will think well you just put a potentiometer on here but they're just not accurate enough so I came up with this idea of a resistor array that has different a resistance, different resistors for each shutter speed and there's like a 12 point switch. And this ended up working fairly well. It took a little bit to figure out because I had to um, I had to do a lot of tests and figure out what resistance is what shutter speed and it was a little bit tricky but uh, and the first iteration of it you see the little hole here I had this little switch sticking out the side of the camera and which was kind of useful I, it, it worked but then I ended up just making a little dongle for it I like I really like the way it works you just kind of push it on and then you just hook it into the camera body and then you can just change the shutter speeds and to whatever shutter speed that you want and it worked actually quite well you know like a quarter second or else a thirtieth of a second but uh, I had to make a, one compromise with this and it was kind of a frustrating compromise. When you switch between apertures, sometimes you have to switch the scene selector switch. And when you do that, all of a sudden your 30th of a second becomes like an eighth of a second. And that's because of the internal electronics in here adjust the shutter speed based on the app based on the scene selector switch and so then when I went to use manual shutter speed I always have to make sure that I compensated two stops when it was set for like sunny day only and it was a little bit 
a little bit confusing and I've uh, definitely didn't get the exposure right for a few pictures before I got used to it but it wasn't a really a system that's gonna work very well so what I ended up doing is um, after making the servo shutter there's another video about my servo shutter I realized boy you know these Arduinos are pretty powerful things and they can they can think really fast and so they can they can make shutter speeds you know up to like I don't know maybe a thousandth of a second or something they're that fast so I decided to try and make uh, a circuit an Arduino circuit that would um, control the shutter in here. So after looking at a little bit of documentation, uh, I, it was, there's actually a little shutter timing switch inside the lens body, and it's really not that hard to get to. All you have to do is take the um, lens body apart, you have to take, take the shutter circuit out and just desolder one of the, the shutter timing switches the shutter time you switch from the ribbon cable and then just solder two wires to each of those terminals and then lead them back into the battery compartment and after they're back in the battery compartment then you can hook them up to an arduino now let me just show you this is um this project kind of in progress i haven't finished it yet i'm just soldering some wires to an arduino and the wires are going to a little display little screen and to a couple of switches and there's a couple of more switches down here to switch between automatic and manual. That's one thing I like, really liked about this conversion is that it allows you to retain uh, automatic exposure if you really want it. And it allows you to switch between that and manual exposure. Now, um, just a little bit of history. There is another project that uses a PIC, a PIC PIC controller, a microcontroller to do the same thing, but it requires you to rip all the guts out of the lens body and then stick this little um, switch this rotary encoding switch in the front it kind of sticks out the front I don't know if I really like that and I didn't really like the idea of having to rip everything out and then program this with a pick which which are really old and they're really hard to, it's kind of hard to find all the hardware it's not and then you um, and then you have to program it and you have to get a programmer for it and then you have to do all this um, a lot of soldering and a lot of ripping out. So this method, all it requires is just desoldering one terminal, leading two wires back to the battery compartment, and then soldering um, the wires to the screen and the switches and to the shutter timing switch. And then what you end up getting is you get an Arduino controlled shutter. And it's kind of cool when you switch it on, you see the little screen. I'm not sure if you can see it here. I might just do some close-ups later on. And it shows the shutter speed that you can change just with these little buttons. So, and these, and these, uh, the, the shutter speed is um, configurable to one third of a stop, which I really like. The reason why I like it, that it's not just full stops is because you can only change these apertures one full stop at a time. Uh, so you get f8.8 and then you get f12.5 and f17.5 but nothing in between uh, it's just the way the aperture works so it's really neat nice to be able to choose shutter speeds of one you know like so you can get one two hundredth of a second one two fiftieth one three twenty and then one four hundred so you have jumps of one third of a stop so you're um, more likely to get the correct exposure when you use this thing and does it really work? Well, I actually um, tested it out with a, a laser shutter tester and it seems to be pretty accurate. I also tested it out with some film. I don't have the samples here and the film seems to be exposed fine. So I'm really happy with this iteration of it. It's not very expensive to build. The components, uh, you have an Arduino, which is about $3 and you have a couple of switches, which are super cheap. You have this little screen, which is um, about a dollar fifty or something like that and you have various wires and stuff and I just I designed this battery compartment um, so that you can just take the battery compartment out of the old camera and just stick this one in its place just with the hinge so installing it is really easy you don't have to cut anything <laughs> the, my first um, 
project had me cut the window open. It's really complicated, but it's so much nicer to have a 3D printer and print these up so that you can just um, install all the components in there and then install it into the back of the camera. This particular camera is configured to use film holders, so you can use any type of film that you can fit into the film holder 3x4 format, Polaroid size format. Um, so then you can shoot paper negatives, lift negatives, um, you can do reversals like at really low ISOs, or you can use high speed negatives like 400 or even um, higher or pushed, pushed film. Uh, and then this shutter speed, this shutter control will be able to control your shutter for any of those situations. Uh, you can also do bulb with this thing just by turning the Arduino off and um, and turning it up to manual, the other two switches, and it will actually keep the shutter open as long as you have the shutter pressed. Now let me just explain really quickly how it works, and it's not that complicated. All it does is um, it taps into that shutter timings, which I told you about earlier, and what happens is when you um, when when you cock the shutter. As you said, the Arduino stands at attention and says, okay, I'm ready to take the picture. And when you push the shutter and the shutter timing switch closes, uh, or opens, I mean, sorry, <laughs> um, then the Arduino starts timing the exposure. And it could be just a couple of, a few microseconds, or it could be like, uh, you know, a whole second or two seconds. And once that exposure is complete, all it does is it just shuts the camera off and that closes the shutter. It's a very simple way of operating. There's nothing really complex about it. And that's what I like about it because it's so simple. So um, another part of the circuit has a little opto isolator which controls power going to the camera. So that's, how it, that's the key to how it works. It's all on GitHub. It's, uh, all the documentation is there. Everything is there to help you build it, including um, schematics and diagrams and um, how to modify the battery compartment uh, to, um, to make it work for you. Um, it also has 3D, the 3D printed file and, and even a picture of the battery compartment with all the wiring and how to wire it up yourself. So, if you decide to do this project, um, definitely um, let us know how it goes by, by writing in some comments. I know it may be a challenge um, for some people, but I think it's way worth it because once you give these batteries, once you, sorry, once you give these cameras manual shutter speed control, it opens up a world of possibilities for other formats. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Hopefully uh, this will inspire you to dig out this old, these old cameras and um, start hacking them up, uh, hacking them up, not hacking them up, but hacking them to make them work uh, with modern films.